Welcome back to my YouTube channel this fruitful day in the month of October 2021. Yeah, water is very healthy. If you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you so much for your continued support. Please watch this video to the very end and you'll never lose your money to careless trends again. If you're new to this channel, a big welcome again. I go by the name Sarah Ayuma, the all-round nutritionist. I have been in the finance docket for close to 10 years uh, now, both as a student in the capacities of an intern, a finance and administrative officer and a finance and, and administrative manager, all right, in um, finance-oriented local company. I'm currently a student, uh, currently pursuing bachelor in commerce, commerce and finance at a very local uh, university, right, and uh, I can say that this means that I have advanced uh, bookkeeping skills. I'm well versed with accounting softwares. All right. I have prepared and analyzed budgets and gave reports of the same to internal and external interested parties. I have handled uh, statutory deductions at length. I enjoy working on payrolls and uh, analyzing cash flows. I I have to mention here that I've also handled invoices at length. I have analyzed various bank statements. I remember we have many uh, banks in, in, in Kenya. So I've analyzed various bank statements during uh, my reconciliation processes and with bank statements you can be sure that I have seen I have seen uh, fraudulent transactions here and there for sure. I've also sat in many successful audit processes thus I can comfortably say that today's topic is one that is very close to my heart and mind. And today's topic is uh, how can one gracefully reserve and preserve their monies. Reserve and preserve their monies. Please don't forget to support this uh, channel by subscribing below for more videos. So I'll dig in uh, right away. How can you and I reserve our monies? What is the meaning of reservation? Reservation means withholding or setting apart. Reservation means withholding or setting apart. Uh, uh, we can do so by investing. We can reserve our monies uh, by investing. Uh, so what do I mean by investing? This means setting aside, setting our monies aside into that which uh, will either bring in cash or some cash flow in the future or you will be able to sell and get out money out of that transaction out of that selling transaction essentially this is putting aside money into something that will grow in value and this thing that will grow in value will in turn you know protect you from the uh, various risks in future and then enable you to be able to benefit from it at the end of the day so this can be anything from keeping dogs, you know, to letting them uh, uh, give birth to puppies and, and then you sell these puppies to rearing chicken and letting this chicken, you know, uh, bring about eggs and then you sell eggs. Anything, 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 anything uh, can be termed as invest investment. Or it can also be a financial asset like shares, you know, that you put in some cash, and then these shares grow and in future give you cash in return. Your money, the money that you put in, what when I when I say return, I mean the money that you put in into that thing plus some interest or some profit. I know many people when they hear, you know, about investing, they'll start giving excuses like I don't have enough money uh, to invest, I am not a good uh I don't have a good hand in business and what have you or any other reason for them you know that will prevent them from walking the, down this path of investing the reality is we all we, we all cannot afford not to invest as long as you have an income whether it is an allowance from a parent or you are employed as long as you have uh, you have any form of income you are required but your future years just require you to put aside something automatically. Uh, allow me to take some more, more water. Uh, so you just have to put aside something for your future years. Let's do some maths here. We can only work for a certain number of years. I mean 40 years. Let's say... In the most ideal situation that you get your job at the age of 25 and you, you afford to, uh, to work uh, until when you are 
the age of 65 then those are basically 40 years of your life and put in mind that most of us will not get our first jobs uh, when we are just 25 or manage to work until when we're 65 so we ideal ideal in a, in an ideal situation we will only have to work for 40 years of our lives and uh, you know from this covid period i'm very sure that unfortunately and uh, without people expecting that many people have lost their jobs some have been you know um named redundant some positions have been re named redundant some companies have actually collapsed so many people have lost their jo jobs unexpectedly what will happen uh, to you when you lose your job and you you're not expecting to lose it and let's say maybe you've not been saving there's someone actually uh, in my residential residential environment who you know used to live a luxurious life he had taken his kids to the most expensive schools the wife was not working and you know this guy had a very nice job until he, he was his position was you know uh termed as redundant when he least expected it and now this guy you know went uh crazy all right why because of stress because of depression probably he was living a life that did not allow him to save and so what happens then what happens then hmm? so you need to save you need to use this sorry Forty years to not only survive but also propel uh, yourself to thrive e even uh, when you're not in a position to work maybe after retirement or in case of any emergency that pops up here and there <sighs> all right uh, because you have no assurance that you'll work continuously from the time you are 25 to the time you are what um 65 you're not you, you don't have that assurity again who told you that uh, your business will be up and running successfully giving you profits uh, by the time you're turning 50 years it can collapse so saving is actually inevitable okay you know some of us in our 20s we take we tell ourselves that we're still young and fly still growing our profession you know uh, we are going to get more qualified and earn more money uh by the years you know some of us even tell ourselves next year i'll be in a better position you know um in my employment by magically all right or i'll have gotten the, the necessary papers so i'll i'll be able to go up the ladder and what have you who told you it's gonna happen that way? in reality actually that does not exist that does not happen it does not happen and so since it does not happen setting aside money is actually inevitable all right in case you get sick or in case you have children with special needs in case are uh, you not able to earn an income later in your life or even for retirement uh, so that when you don't actually have energies to work you you will have money aside that is working for you and uh cash flows that you'll have created right that pay for the needs that you have when you can no longer have energy to work ha ah, so you you really i uh, don't have a choice even if you earn 10000 today put aside 200 bob or uh 500 bob or what you can all right at least a minimum of 10 percent to 30 percent of your income sh should be set aside for your future at least a minimum of 10 percent to 30 percent of your income should be set aside for your future be it you've received a gift from someone maybe uh you know someone gives you a gift of 10,000. you can at least set aside a k a k out of your gift or even three 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 key three three g's i wanted to say three g's you can set aside three g's of that gift all right in the first place you are not even expecting it so you can as well set uh, the whole of it aside for your future putting aside every time you earn anything set some amount aside uh, that way you'll get into a habit of of saving you'll get into a habit of saving and with time you will be saving very naturally if you are a parent 
if you are a parent it's your responsibility to teach your kid how to save and if you're dating for mar for marriage it's your responsibility to check if your partner has enacted this habit uh, because if you haven't you if you if if they haven't let's say your partner the person you're dating has not enacted this habit of saving you uh, you uh, you'll be getting into a contract with a problematic future all right you'll be getting into a contract with a problematic future can you imagine uh marrying a woman who who does not know how to save right every time they get money they go to buy shoes they go to buy the most expensive handbags even if they don't need it you know at the end of it all you will this person will be pulling your fa financial financial stability down instead of taking it up all right so you have a responsibility to check if your partner has enacted this habit of saving because i'll assume that you'll start dating at the age of 25 all right so by 25 someone should have trained themselves mentally to be saving you know there are people have come across you know and then you just ask this person this a random question do you have a savings account do you have some money set aside for your account and they tell you at whenever i get money i found myself using all of my money all right and when you check this person's lifestyle they are into partying into things that are more of uh, luxurious than are uh, than they are of basic needs all right so this is not a wise person if you get into a marriage contract with such a person you're signing a, you a lifetime to a problematic future so avoid such things avoid such instances just do you do your check ask the hard questions get the answers and choose the best partner for your future uh, please don't wait to earn uh, that huge amount of ma of money for you to save start small by cultivating the saving habit bit by bit look at you can just do a survey by looking at uh, this billionaires uh, all over the world right most of them started cultivating this habit a long time ago uh, so just start don't wait for a perfect time or don't wait until it's too late all right don't wait until it's too late for you to start saving don't wait until it's too late for you to start saving mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. have you ever uh, looked at billionaires like all over the world you know most of them maybe had regular jobs some of them uh, um, never inherited uh, uh, huge amounts of money they were just normal individuals who enacted this, this habit of saving so do yourself a favor and uh, just start enacting that habit today now don't say tomorrow don't say next month no no start saving even 10 shillings 20 shillings 30 shillings you know um so from your regular income make a decision a decision not to spend too much of it and instead actualize your needs and avoid some luxury uh, for you to be able to save the maximum amount of money you can save all right so what are needs needs are basic clothing shelter meal and exercise you can avoid living in the most uh, expensive rentals uh, you know uh, putting on the mo the most expensive clothes eating the most expensive meals and using you know the most expensive gyms live alone driving the most expensive cars just for the camera just for a show off all right in fact if you buy a car buy a car that will help you move around and also make deliveries if you are a business person not a car that you just want to show off or fit in a click don't buy a, a car just to fit in a certain click <clears throat> because when emergency strike that click that you're trying to fit in will not be there for you in fact the, they'll be gossiping about you you know saying about uh, about i've had have you ever had someone saying that that person used to earn close to 200 g's a month how come they you know they did not uh, secure something for their future that is a click that is your friend right the one you are trying to please by buying a very uh, expensive car just to show off so don't do that did you know that the ones who have money are the ones who are slowly saving and not those that show off just to fit in did you know that the ones that who have money are the ones that are slowly saving and not those ones those ones that are show off just to fit in it doesn't matter how 
much you have or uh, what you start with. What matters is the consistency in your saving. Whatever it is, it is be it a hundred bob or a thousand bob, of course, the more you have, the better. But uh, you have to be consistent. The younger you are, the more you should you should be able to put away. Because the more you put away, the more uh, you benefit in future. The more you put away, the more you benefit in future. Think about this. When your parents are still paying your bills, you don't uh, really have many responsibility. When your parents are still paying your bills, you know, feeding you, uh, paying for shelter for you, um, you know, and doing all these things, clothing you, these things that you, sh you will be doing uh, for yourself when you when you move out if if your parents are still doing those things for you then you should be in a position to save the most that's when you should save much but apparently this time this is the very time that many of us splash our monies you know imagine at the end of tw uh, at, at the age of 25 years you can uh, you make a decision of just putting aside 2500 ev every end of your month instead of spending it how much uh, will you have at the end of 35 years of consistency of consistent saving hmm? you'll have uh, something to the tune of 8.9 million imagine after 35 years when you start saving 2500 a month at the age of 25 at the age of 25 after 35 years you will have something to, uh, to the tune of 8.9 million if you decide to put aside 5000 every month at uh, at the age of 25 all right at the age of 25 you start you make a decision of putting aside 5000 do you know by the, by the end of 35 years of saving consistently you'll have earned 17 million painlessly at an interest rate of 10% per annum only at an interest rate of 10% per annum only <clears throat> sorry about that imagine without thinking or working just setting that amount aside you'll have earned that 17 million all right so what is your excuse really there's no excuse to not save there's no excuse to not save it's just a decision away it's just a decision away from you today all right hmm. don't be a last minute decision maker uh, that you have to wait until yeah, you you're turning 25 years you're turning 55 years and about to retire to start saving start now and even if you are 55 years of age it's never too late all right uh please start today you can redeem your time you can use your wisdom and 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 your network to leverage uh, that which will move you to the right direction or uh keep you in the next level of that you require you know for your for your retirement years i'm sure you won't also make crazy mistakes like you'd have made uh, when you were 30 years or 20 years of age so the time to start saving is actually now not tomorrow or the next day <coughs> you just make that decision now and and be consistent with it uh, i would like to mention that you can never invest if you do not have savings right you can have these opportunities to invest but you can never invest unless you have savings so before you start putting your money aside in high risk ventures and that are likely to lock it in for a period of time first have money aside uh, for your safety net so what is a safety net a safety net is still part of your savings all right and uh, <coughs> you, you'll be able to tap into uh, in, into this in case you lose a job or your business does not work <coughs> as well as expected or inform in case of any other emergency so in in such a scenario uh, you will you will require to maybe tap into uh, your, your safety net so please uh, set your set some money aside in the <laughs> In the name or form of a safety net. Uh, so what is a safety net? A safety net basically is uh, an amount equal to six months of your basic or critical monthly expenses. An amount equal to uh, six months of your basic stroke critical monthly expenses. Mark this word at least 
six months of your basic or critical monthly expenses meaning you don't have to stop when the amount reaches uh, an, um, uh, your six your six months critical expenses work okay you have to continue uh, making your safety net larger it's a, it's it's just a bit <coughs> so the la the larger your safety net the better uh, so what are these critical or basic expenses that I'm talking about that you can and in, uh, you, you can include in your safety net uh, these are transportation costs a rental cost education cost meals you know clothing exercising how much does uh, these expenses cost you in a month multiply this uh, this amount by six at the very least and set it aside remember the larger your safety net the better put this aside in a savings account or a money market fund not in a fixed account please don't put this in a fixed account you should put it in a savings account or a money market uh, fund account that in case of any emergency then uh, you're allowed access to your monies immediately right and this is going to always sit in as your emergency fund so i'll pose this question to you do you have a safety net already if you have well and good you're on, uh, on the right path if you don't have please you need to start now just take a pen and a paper and, and write down your transportation cost your rental cost your education cost your meal cost your clothing your exercising cost and multiply that by six then set that amount aside at the very least and keep keep uh keep what keep enlarging your safety net even if the amount surpasses your your six months worth of a monthly critical expenses all right then anyway even if it surpasses the six months who stands to benefit it's you no one else it's just you so keep making it um larger and larger all right so then you can start thinking about investing after having a safety net you can start thinking about investing so are you sitting there thinking of investing when you not even have when you don't even have a safety net you have to start uh, by setting monies aside for your safety net first before thinking of investing what is investing investing is putting money are putting aside money that earns you higher than the rate of inflection inflation investing is putting aside the money that earns you higher than the current rate of inflation so let's say uh, the, the rate of inflation is six percent and you're earning you're earning you for example you've invested in a bank that gives you a return of three percent and the inflation rate is six percent you really you really you really need to find out if you, you can sit down with your bankers and renegotiate on a higher rate or look for a better option that will give you an interest rate of at least 6.5% to 7% above uh, so that you can beat the inflation rate remember you do not have a uh, much to do with the inflation rates so it needs to be your landmark your benchmark all right you should use an inflation rate as a benchmark to know if uh, if you're investing in the right um, places for your own good all right so I'll, i'd like to mention the other options all right so let's say your bank is not is not willing to negotiate with you uh, for an interest rate that is above the current inflation rate and there are these other options that i want to maybe speak about and uh, they are called asset classes I think uh, we have five asset classes uh, currently, all right? So the first one is cash and cash-like assets. So here you want to set aside cash. You want to set aside cash first of all for the emergency and then for liquid for liquidity. So you'll have to set aside money first for emergency and then for liquidity. So why am I insisting on emergency first? Because emergencies are not avoidable. Emergencies are not avoidable. That's why they are called emergencies. So if you don't have funds set aside for emergencies, then you, you ha have funds set aside for liquidity purposes. The thing is when an, an emergency arises, all right, 
you'll find yourself utilizing funds that you had set aside for liquidity purposes. And this is where you find many, many individuals, right, who tell, who, who tell you that I'd, I had saved for business, then I ended up eating my money. It, it simply means that they did not have a safety fund. They did not have funds set aside for emergencies, all right? So they ended up use, using funds that they had set aside for liquidity purposes, all right? So the available options for cash and cash-like assets are your bank account. Find out, uh, kindly find out which accounts your bank has and at uh, what rates are tagged to those accounts. Are the rates not negotiable? Are the rates the ba your bank is providing negotiable? The kinds of accounts available in banks are the current account, savings account, and fixed account. Right? So if you want to set aside a safety fund, you can use your current or your savings account. And then for liquidity purposes, you can choose between the three kinds of account. That is current savings and fixed uh, accounts based on uh, the interest rates that the bank will give you and if the rates are actually nego negotiable. The second option uh, for cash and cash-like assets is circle savings. Have you heard of circles, all right? There are charged circles, there are various kinds of circles, there are job circles out here. So there are also options for an option for cash uh, for cash and cash like assets, right? The other option uh, for cash and cash like assets that you you can tap in into is a uh, money money market funds. These are funds pulled together by institutions like Sanlam, I, ICA, Old Mutual, CIC, and many others. These institutions pull, pull funds and earn new interest. So the best option in these institutions for cash and ca uh, cash like assets is the money market fund. Have you ever been to uh, Sanlam or ICA or uh, Old Mutual or CIC? They have various options for cash and cash like assets, all right? But the best option that I will advocate that you tap into is the money market fund all right the money market fund earns you an interest of between 10 uh, between 8 uh, to 9 percent per annum some, some even earn you an interest of 10 to 10.5 and this interest rate automatically covers what at the rate of inflation every time you uh, want to invest money for liquidity purposes, purposes kindly put in mind the inflation rate the rate that that institution is offering you or the institution that you choose to invest you invest your money is in the rate that they are offering you should be over and, ab and above the current inflation rate so that you can make some profits uh, okay and then um, the second class of asset is uh, equities shares and stocks right equities shares and stocks is another asset class so if you if you are in in a registered chama i'm talking of a registered chama not a startup chama there are many issues that come with startup chamas i've been in one chama that hey almost almost went down with my money because it was not yet registered okay so as long as a chama is registered or it's a limited company or you or you own shares in that organization as part of the owner or a shareholder that's an investment and if you buy shares in a listed company on the stock exchange whether it is kcb or safari you are a shareholder and a part owner of that company this means that when the company does well and make profits you share in those profits by earning dividends and the price of that stock goes up which gives you a capital gain Anytime the price of a, of, of a stock goes up, you gain, you get capital gains. Uh, this is where you can sell uh, that share at a higher price than at uh, the price that you acquired it for. So shares, equity, and stocks is the second class of assets uh, that you can choose or decide to tap into. The, another class of asset is fi fixed income investments like treasury bonds corporate bonds treasury bills and what have you uh, this is basically debt all right you're choosing to be a creditor to an institution 
or even the government at large all right here you lend your money to an institute an institution or the government and they pay you back that amount of money that you lent all right after a period of time with an interest they pay you back the amount that you lent plus interest after a period of time please have an official document to this effect to avoid bad blood flowing from the data to you so the government pays very well i understand uh, to the rates of 12 11 12 13 and even 14 percent depending on the length of time treasury bonds go for go from uh, two years to 30 years and treasury bills go from three months to six months maybe to even one year etc so you can earn a good interest from lending your money to other people and they pay you back if you've taken enough precautions with the risks involved before lending uh, money to someone or an institution make sure you've taken enough precautions uh, with the risks involved so maybe you before lending money to anyone or a company you can just uh, note down the ri risks involved and then besides the risks that you've noted and then um, come up with the ways that you can take precautions before you know lending money to those institutions um, the lowest risk and thus most trustworthy data is the government they will always always pay you back i just thought of mentioning that anyway so the fourth class of asset the fourth asset class is real estate real estate most of you have heard of real estate advertising themselves you know in, in radio stations and what have you so you can develop it uh, you can construct some units that are not so costly maybe with 300 uh, thousand kenya shillings you can build something substantial that will bring you, you um, some monthly income when investing you must understand what your return is right don't just invest blindly without putting into consideration the cash flows <coughs> or returns that are likely to come you shouldn't invest a whole three million uh, only to earn thirty thousand if you're investing three million make sure that that investment has a return of at least three hundred thousand not thirty thousand at least ten percent of your investment before investing in it even with real estate if the yield doesn't match please don't venture into that sort of investment put your money aside and earn some interest just put your money aside and earn some interest from your monies you can also do land banking which is buying land subdividing it and selling it under uh, this fourth class of assets uh, uh, sorry the fourth asset class called real estate you can do land banking right So the fifth asset class is alternative investment options. Alternative investment options. Here we have everything under the sun that you can do, uh, from buying gold to having collections to private equity, uh, uh, actually everything that isn't within the other four asset brackets. All right. So in uh, investing isn't. <clears throat> really as complex as many keep thinking it is it is as simple as identifying a, a low-end supplier purchasing items at a lower cost eg uh, 50 kenya shillings identify identifying a high-end market and selling your items at a higher price eg 300 kenya shillings that is a huge return a capital gain of some sort gains from uh, being able to sell at higher prices so in this casing scenario the gain is around 250 kenya shillings instead of splashing the 200 kenya shillings 250 kenya shillings a wise investor <coughs> will choose to forego all right G going in uh, one eight kupiga kupigia mwili pole they will forgo that all right <laughs> they'll forgo kupigia mwili pole and they'll go back to the market and buy more 
items from the lower class supplier, low end supplier, and sell uh, those items to the high end supplier. Okay, this is called reinvesting, <sighs> which will compound with time. Reinvesting is what keeps many businesses afloat. Look around at the businesses that stand strong. It's as a result of reinvesting. But many just want to associate with high-end suppliers and buyers that end up making losses. Uh, some choose to kupigia mwili pole instead of reinvesting the, the returns that they get. That also end, end up making losses. <coughs> right? I would like to mention this, uh, that needs are, needs are forms of business opportunities around us. So maybe uh, you can take up a pen and paper at this very point and write down the various needs in your environment uh, that could earn you money. Just look at your environment and uh, draft the various needs uh, that you know are there that could earn you money. And these opportunities are the ones that align with your personal goals, your personal values, and your personal circumstances. Not your husbands and wives goals, values, and personal circumstances. Have you heard of husbands who actually force uh, certain businesses down the throat of their wives, all right? And those businesses, they are the ones who want to do them, not the wives. But just because he is the husband, he forces a certain business down the wife's throat. So uh, when, uh, when coming up with these opportunities, that or, or needs that, that are around in your environment, please be sure that they are aligned with your goals, with your values, and your personal circumstances. Have you ever been to shops? I've, I've ever been to a shop where a certain customer came to buy cigarettes and the shopkeeper uh, told this customer that he does not sell cigarettes. Why? Because selling cigarettes does not align with the shopkeeper's values. All right? So don't just do any business. Do a business that aligns with your goals, have goals as an individual, with your values and with your personal circumstances. All right? That's why everyone is relevant in this society because my personal circumstances, my values and my goals are not are the same as someone else's goals, values and personal circumstances. All right? Um, so do you have personal goals? personal values. If you don't have, please sit down and write those down so that uh, that uh, when you're identifying opportunities or needs in a society, then you identify needs that align with your goals, with your values, and even with your personal circumstances. Do you understand your personal circumstances as an individual? What you can and cannot do? If you don't, please just also note that down. Not things that you can do and things that you cannot do because it will help you make the right investing decision as your starting point start with uh, what you know because your circumstances groom you into who you are maybe you grew up with parents who reared cows and so you can handle cows more easily and with a lot of grace you know where to buy cows where to sell them the vaccinations and how to feed them your circumstances as an individual make you uh, 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 well, uh sorry they make you well versed all right Your circumstances make you well versed, uh, so you don't have to really be a genius to invest. You just need to understand your goals, your values, and your circumstances, and then go out there and identify a need that suits uh, your goals, your values, and your circumstances. Avoid starting things and businesses uh, because your friends are thriving in them. So what? You know that uh, I do uh, a gift basket business, right? I sell gifts. By the way, if you've not liked our Facebook page and our Instagram page, I go to it. It's Julek Gift Basket that Supplies. I'll tag the name down there so that you do not confuse it. So that just because I'm thriving in, in, in my gift basket business doesn't mean that you should do it. If it, if it doesn't fit your goals, your values, and your personal circumstances, please don't venture into it just because I'm trying in it. Because probably uh, my gift basket business aligns with my goals, with my values, and with my personal circumstances. I can easily, you know, package gifts. I can easily 
deliver them. I can easily sort them. I know where to buy my gift items. I know where to sell them, all right? So do not um, start businesses just because your friends are thriving in it. Because no two individuals are the same in this world. No two individuals are the same. Even twins are different, all right? So do things that work for you. And if you do an, an investigation, investigation on these businesses that fail, most of them were started just because of people seeing that um, so and so is thriving in this business, so they think they can start it up and they can thrive in it. It doesn't go that way. Do things that work for you. So always start uh, with what you know as you grow your knowledge in what you want to achieve. If you know uh, maybe things to do with cows, and you want to achieve uh, a big, in, you know, having many cows, then start with what you know as you grow your knowledge uh, in what you want to achieve. So as I close this, I want to remind you and I that our assets are meant to sustain our current stands, standards of living, take care of our unforese <laughs> unforeseeable future, right? Then earn us wealth. So before achieving the former don't rush into the latter don't rush uh, to put your monies in high in risky ventures if you can't sustain uh, sustain your current living standards if you've not taken care of uh, your un unforeseeable future don't rush so don't rush it's very unwise uh, to do such a thing the larger your safety and net the safer you are to invest in other opportunities that will uh, uh, give you a return that's higher than the current inflation rate therefore you can channel some monies into a high risk opportunity like forex trading after you've sorted out your safety net and you've invested your monies correctly all right so anytime you get funds gifts or even fortunes think along uh those four lines number one sustaining your current a state of living number two having a huge safety net number three investing where you can beat the current inflation rate and then now take risks right like forex trading don't just get a fortune and put all of it in high risk opportunities like forex trading uh, in the name of earning quick wealth it will not work if it backfires on you what will you do then remember when promised a high return on any high risk venture then the risk involved is high is equally quite high so hold your horses and do the needful by following the necessary protocol to protect yourself and only risk your money only risk money that if lost you won't end up in a crisis as an individual only risk money that if lost you won't end up in a crisis as an individual and then comes the question of preservation how how can we preserve our monies What is preservation? Preservation is keeping something safe uh, or in a good condition. So in this case, keeping money safe or in a good condition. So these are the principles that have worked for me uh, and many other faithful Christians out here. If, oh, the key thing here is consistency. You preserve your money by tithing at least 10% of it, of your gross. All right. So if you get 30,000, 10% of 30,000, gross not net right 10 percent of your gross just like uh kra taxes people it's 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 of your gross and not of your net amount so you should uh practice tithing 10 percent of your gross uh it doesn't have to be salary even gifts that you get and pocket monies uh, are to be tight. A tight is everything from the land as outlined in Leviticus 27:30. It's a way of recognizing that everything that we have belongs to the Almighty God and that we are just what custodians of what we have. And as a faithful custodian, we are mandated to give at least at least 10%. At least you can give 20, you can give 30, but at least 10% of, of everything that we have back to God. You should also tie to a church that nurtures you uh, with God's word, not just any church that you walk in. Many will ask, well, what if the church leaders misuse the amounts? Guess what? That's not your problem. 
if they misuse uh, your tithe, that's not your problem. It's theirs. And God will judge you for, will judge them for the misuse. Yours is just to recognize that God is the owner of everything that you have by giving back 10% of your earnings, all right, to the church as you wait on God to activate the blessings that come with it. I think also Sunday school children should be encouraged or even given envelopes to, to tithe whatever their parents give them uh, so that it becomes an, a habit at a very early age. Um, Malachi 3.10 uh, to 12 speaks on the blessings that follow tithers, that God will bless them to a point that they won't even be able to handle uh, the blessings. So remember when tithing, you are not doing it uh, uh, for your pastor, you're not doing it for the church leaders, but you're doing it as a recognition that it is God that gave you that thing that you have and he promises to bless you through it. All right? He promises to keep away pests from devouring your income. What are pests? I'm not talking of if you if you give farm produ produce and then you know pests as animals. But if you are just employed in an organization, then pests are things like sicknesses that will eat into your money. There are things like um, you know losing your, your money carelessly. God will keep away pests from devouring your income. If you stay faithful in giving him his 10%, in recognizing that indeed he is God. It is that serious, my dears. If you don't give tithe, you're not recognizing that that which you have comes from God. You just have to give it. It's not a choice. If you want pests to eat into your pocket and your income, please don't give the 10%. If you want God to keep the pests away from your income, please give him what belongs to him, his 10%. God will also make sure that your business will never fail to yield fruit. And by fruit, here, it means profits. Like you'll get that which you get plus profits. Let me use the scenario of a tree, all right? A tree that is growing, all right? It has branches, it has leaves, it has the trunk, and then it has fruits, all right? So the trunk, the leaves, and the branches remain when the fruits come right so everything that you have will remain if you give your 10 percent faithfully so that's a way of preserving your income the second way of preserving your wealth is by giving offering and giving to the needy uh second corinthians 9 6 to, to 8 says Gen um remember this whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will reap generously each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion all right for god loves a cheerful giver and god is able to bless you abundantly so that all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work so the second way of preserving your income is by giving generously because god the blessing that comes with giving generously is god will bless you abundantly all right some will ask who are the needy a needy person is anyone disadvantaged by nature in any form and way all right they are always around us if we look very closely so if you give cheerfully without being reluctant, without being compelled, then God is bound to bless you. Some of us give, but they give na madharao. Unapena tu sababu melazimishwa, unapena unaongea vibaya, you know. God does not bless such a giver. God only blesses, blesses someone who gives with a cheerful heart and generously for that matter. So the third way of preserving uh, your income and wealth or your money is by giving to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, right? I will mention the difference between tax evasion and tax avoid avoidance here. Tax avoidance is reducing a taxpayer's tax liability without breaking the law. And this is acceptable. However, tax evasion is a sin because here an individual fails to pay their true uh, tax liability. You know, there are these individuals who just choose not to pay their tax liability. That is a sin. But there are others who are wise. They know ways and means 
uh, on how to reduce their tax liability by not breaking the law. That is acceptable, all right? So tax avoidance is acceptable. Tax evasion is a sin. Because here, if you evade paying tax, then you'll end up spending more money, right? Through penalties. You'll end up spending more money through penalties. So why go through all that hassle? Just pay your taxes. Look for ways and means uh, to reduce your tax liability without breaking the law and pay your taxes. It's a requirement from God also. Mm -hmm. So please pay your true taxes without fail. Remember, uh, you should pay your taxes because authorities are working for God when they fulfill the duties outlined as outlined in Romans 13, 6 to 7, right? So pay your taxes. That's the third way of preserving your, your, your wealth. Preserving your wealth, preserving your monies by paying taxes. By using tax avoidance instead of tax evasion. So the fourth way of um, preserving your money is, is by s not selling your inheritance. So let's say uh, you've inherited some something from your parent or from your grandparents or anything. Don't sell it because it's someone else's sweat that you, you've, you've gained access to through them, all right? So anything uh, someone else has worked hard for, to give you should be used to get you more and not be sold for selfish gains. You're not supposed to sell inheritance just uh, for selfish gains. You're supposed to use that inheritance to gain to get more maybe gains from it. You can use that inheritance to get a gains. So you can use that inheritance to get uh, gains from it, but you cannot use it. You cannot. You're not allow to sell your inheritance if you want to preserve your monies or your wealth. I remember Genesis 27, 4, where Isaac told his son to bring him meat that he can eat and bless him before dying. I know many of us like taking things to our mothers just to make them happy. happy. Forgetting our fathers, yet it's our fathers that carry our blessings with us. Rebe Rebecca could not bless her son, but Jacob, uh, sorry, but Isaac could Isaac could bless his son because he was their father. So uh, to preserve your wealth and your money, uh, just try and be generous with your father, your biological father. If you have, uh, if you're privileged to see them, to live with them, to know them, uh, be try and be generous with them because they are the holders of your blessings. They are the holders of your blessings, not your mothers, right? If you don't have a father, well and good. You can identify another father figure and just be generous with them so that they can bless you. But if you have your biological father, please be generous with your father so that he can be able to bless you. Hope you learned one or two things uh, from this video that you intend to make a decision to practice uh, for your better tomorrow. See you in my next video.